do you remember the first video that you actually hashed out a storyboard, like figured out what you're going to do and tried to talk her into doing it with you? I put her on my desk and she just sat so perfectly. And I was like, oh, wow, like she's not bothered by this. And, you know, I was like, okay, let's see if I put a headset on her. Does she going to like freak out? But she was super calm. And I was like, wow, we just opened the door to like a whole bunch of different contents. I try to just take anything in music videos, like the one, like you said, with her in the hoodie up and Eminem, like I was like, okay, like this is something I want to do eight mile, you know, where it's yeah, from the movie. Intense. Yeah. The eight mile, uh, famous movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I just want to do whatever, like she's comfortable doing and you know, just be different. I just would never imagine like my content being that impactful, but it means the world to me to hear something like that. Hey, I'm Dr. Doug. I'm a chiropractor for both animals and humans. My life's passion is volunteering at farms and helping rescue animals in need. Join me as we connect with people who have dedicated their lives to helping animals. Together we'll discover how helping animals live better lives will teach us to be better humans. Welcome to the Animal Cracker Podcast. I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest, Cody Torres. Hailing from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Cody is a 28-year-old creative dynamo currently making waves in Austin, Texas. With his trusty companion, Taurus, also called Tori, Cody has soared to social media stardom, amassing over 1.4 million followers and a staggering billion views across his social media platforms. Cody's collaborations with major players like Amazon, Meta, and Disney highlight his prowess in video editing, photography, and solidifying his status as a leader in the creative community. Join us as we explore Cody's journey and adventures with Tori. How was that? Was that a good uh, intro? I, I, I thought it was great. Oh, good. It was great. It's true. That's the whole thing. I mean, I can't believe that you have a billion views by now. It's been a long journey, but it's been a great one. So yeah, yeah it's now, been good. I know who you are. And, you know, I checked this morning on Instagram, you have 435 thousand uh followers on instagram and and you're also on tiktok too right yep, how many do yep. you have on tiktok i didn't look at tiktok this morning yeah so i guess recently we hit like a million i want to say a couple months ago um so that's huge milestone for me because that's where i started actually on tiktok and, wow yeah um so the reason i wanted him on like you know i so far we've interviewed a lot of people that are from rescue or uh we have a world class horse trainer and and so my world when i go out and and volunteer to work at these places with the animals cuz i work with horses dogs pigs chickens cows cats rabbits you name it that's a big heart a big part of my heart and what i like to do is is go to these places and help um medically challenged animals or any animals they feel might need my care and, but I'm also spend, I don't know how many hours trying to build up my own content. I'm, I'm a YouTube creator. I'm an Instagram creator. I first got on YouTube in 2011 with a not so successful, um, health tip thing. It's still on there. I'm thinking I made it to 10,000 followers on that, but I really only, uh, would post every like couple of months. I didn't really know YouTube yet. That was 2011. Yeah. And then more recently I have house of Cairo and my animal cra uh, cracker, thing um but i know how hard it is to build uh social media and then i like your social media because you're you you're like a filmmaker not a social media Thank instagram you. guy like you're above that yeah i appreciate that that means yeah. a lot because i i sometimes didn't think people would recognize like the talent behind it you know they just think it's cute dog videos but to get recognition as like a filmmaker i feel like is best compliment yeah. And I, that's who I see you as, as a filmmaker. And it wouldn't shock me if like a couple of years from now, I connect with you and you go, yeah, I just got, I'm <laughs> directing a, a TV episode now, or I'm, I'm uh, directing a, a comedy feature with animals because you would yeah. be the guy that they should really consider when they're looking for a director of something like that. Um, that. So if, if people are curious, go to his Instagram. What, what, what's the name of your Instagram? I know, but, but say it out loud. Yeah, Cody Taurus, just Cody dot Taurus, um, and that's just like the zodiac sign T A U R U S. So it's pretty much across all boards: Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, everything. So he has his dog Tori in these scenes that he creates that are hysterical. I'm, I'm like chuckle out loud. It's so good, and they go viral. I mean, he gets millions and millions and millions of views. Um, tell us a little bit about Tori 
And then after that, I'm going to ask you also how you got started or where was the creative impulse to say, maybe I'll start making videos on social media. Uh, so tell us a little about who's Tori. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tori is a three-year-old Shiba Inu female. Um, ever since I was young, I've always been attracted to these dogs. They're beautiful looking animals. They look just like foxes. But um, I did my research and I realized that these dogs have a very unique temperament. Um, like they're very stubborn. And everywhere you go on the internet, you'll see, do not get these dogs as a first dog. And I was like, oh, dang, I, like I really want this as a first dog though because i've never had a dog before so did all my research and i was like you know what contrary to what everybody telling me like i'm just gonna do it and i i got her and um it was definitely hard but she is um very sassy huge personality um but when we're filming she's very patient but if she does not like something she will let it be known she was have uh the sheba scream where they're just like it's just, it's like a blood curdling scream, and sometimes it's not even because they're like in real danger. They're just sassy little animals. So you mean the the um, breed does that? They they have the breed this does howling that howling scream. Yeah, they're known for that specifically. So and why did you? Why did they people advise on on the internet not to get this type of dog as your first dog? What what was the reason? It's because they are so strong willed and so stubborn, like. I feel like when you think of a dog, you think of like a happy animal that wants to please its owner. Like you guys play fetch. Mm -hmm. When I think of a Shiba, I think of a cat that just wants to do what it wants to do. If they're off leash, there's no recall. Um, they're not playing fetch. It's like everything is on their term. So I I took that with a grain of salt a little bit. And then when I got her, I was like, oh, OK, this is this is what people are talking about. Like, I can't let her off leash. <laughs> yeah, and, and she is like that, right? She's got she her is. own. Uh, you know, attitude or or point of view on everything. Yeah, she's absolutely like that. But but meanwhile, you get her into a hoodie, you play a Eminem soundtrack. She yeah. has her hands on the keyboard practically, like and headphones on, yeah. and she yeah. does this whole scene of like this rapping song. You know, I've just the f stuff you do is hysterical. Thank you. So yeah, you do I... get her to do stuff. Yeah, I do. I mean, I get her to do what she will do. You know, yeah. I, I couldn't train her to, you know, jump and do backflips if she didn't want to do it. So I have to work with what she will do. Right. So. Which is serious acting. She, <laughs> yeah. She's like, listen, uh, you can call it comedy, but I'm going to do a serious scene. You yeah. Know? And exactly. she is. So. That's what's funny is she's serious. And the humor is how serious she takes her, her acting challenges. Exactly. She's, she's the boss. She's yeah. a leader. So I work with what I, what she'll give me. Yeah, almost like a method actor where she's like, I'm going to get into this character. I'm going to yeah. really, I'm going to really feel it. I'm going to go deep into that emotion and yeah. you can film. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's literally how it is. So. Yeah. So then you got her and then right away, were you like taking pictures and videotaping her? Did you think maybe this is a good Instagram dog or did you yeah. do Instagram before other than just for personal friends and family? Yeah, I did Instagram just like regular personal um, reasons, but when I got her, I started out doing the the pretty typical content, like cute dog. She was a puppy, like cute sound in the background, like a lot of trends. And then um, I was like, you know, like I want to do more. Like I just wanted to like do more than this. I want to like you know break the boundaries of the typical dog content. So um, as she got older, I was just I wanted to bring like my inspirations to life, and I wanted her to be like my co star. So I was just like, let's let's see what she can we can do because I just didn't want to be like in that box of just like a dog content creator. So how old was she when you first made like your first video that wasn't just a cute dog thing like every single other person on the internet does for the most part? <laughs> you know, they have a cute dog and they photograph it or they see it wagging its tail when the UPS guy comes, you know, and it's cute. And they put it to yeah. a little music and that, and I love that. I watch that all day. I mean, that's what I do. I watch animals. Yeah. No, all the no, time. Shade. But, no shade. But, but then yours is like, like almost like Saturday night live is doing a sketch. Yeah. You know, that's actually who could hire you also. It's just like, we need you to do animal sketches, you know? Yeah. Um, no. Or comedy central or something because you're doing something different. So do you remember the first video that you actually hashed out a storyboard? Like, figured out what you're going to do and tried to talk her into doing it with you. 
Yeah, I think the first one was where when she sat at um I put her on my desk and she just sat so perfectly and I was like, Oh wow, like she's not bothered by this. And you know, I was like, Okay, let's see if I put a headset on her. Does she gonna like freak out? But she was super calm and I was like, Wow, we just opened the door to like a whole bunch of different content. So um, that's kind of where I started this little work from home persona. And like the Shibas are known for their side eyes where they're just like looking a little bit. So if yeah. I just held a treat up, she would just glance at me and I was like, perfect shot. And it just gave that like feeling of an annoyed coworker. So I was just like, I can play off of this. And yeah. that's where I just branched off from there. I want to share a product that I'm really excited about. And in this case, it's my product. I made this video course recently called How to Massage Your Dog. The website is called howtomassageyourdog.com and it's still on sale if you check in with it, but it gives you a way to work on your dog from head to toe, whether it's a few minutes a day or outright full body sessions. It's good for that puppy. It's also good for your senior dog. It's a way that you can manage pain and help that dog not suffer as it goes through the different stages of life. I show everything in this video course from hand techniques through full body massage, everything from a teacup dog to a Great Dane. It's all in one video course. Check it out, let me know what you think, and there's even a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. HowToMassageYourDog.com. Oh, how did that video do, for example? So then you put that video up. Yeah, and that it did amazing. Like the first one I did, it was like, 20 million views with that and i was like okay this is this is good i can build off of this and like so I, we just kind of started a little series like that if you're listening to this in your car um just know that we we do make a video version of this podcast so when you come back get, get to my youtube channel called animal cracker you'll get to see uh some of tori's work and also tori's photos and and just so you get a sense of maybe i'll have a do you have a photo of a good side eye you know I have too many, too many, so yeah. I can I can send you a lot. So. Yeah, that one I would want like a still photography, not a video, so we could really catch the eye going to the side. It's a little bit of a stink face too, isn't it? Like a little yeah, bit of attitude. It absolutely is. Super, yeah. super attitude. And that's what's perfect about it. <laughs> All right, so another one I want you to send, which is actually at the top of his reel, uh, because this one I rewatched this morning, and again, I laugh out loud, is the two of you, here's the scene, everybody. The two of you are in bed late at night, and there's a sound, like like a menacing sound. And I don't remember how you staged it, but it was basically like where you would ask your dog, like, go check that out. Mm -hmm. And Tori, then we hear, uh, what, what's it called? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire soundtrack? Yeah, yeah. So we exactly. hear the, you know, I don't, I can't reproduce it because I don't know how to sing like that. But it's the, the uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with that that beat, that, that really intense, uh, countdown music and there's the four categories of choices and one of them was side eye one of them is i want to go back to sleep so these are the four choices that were running through tori's mind of what we should do that there might be a menacing sound attacking us and what was the do you remember what the other two were one was side yeah. eye one was uh, go back to sleep yeah, one was go back to sleep. I'm like in quote um, parentheses. I'm not a service dog. And then um, the other one was go check it out, risk my life. And then the last one was um, just bark intimidatingly. Yeah. So that was that one was I love that one. And that, that one amazing. got how many million views? I mean, that one got millions, millions. Yeah. Of views. Yep. That one was one of my favorites, actually. Yeah, so. me too. And and again, like that is much more than just a, a cute dog photo because you actually created like a little mini sketch, like sketch comedy. And uh, absolutely. So what could be like an inspiration for you? Like, do you just see something in regular pop popular media and then you go, maybe we could spin this on its head and create a dog version of this or. Exactly. Yeah. You pretty much yeah. like hit the nail on the head. Um, I know a lot of like creators, especially like, you know, dog creators though, they jump on the trend and they like, do a trend um, with their dog. But I'm like, well, exactly what you said. Let me see this and let me see how I can have Tori and me do it, you know, and that could be a dog trend. That could be like just a skit that I've seen from Key and Peele. Like, I try to just take anything in music videos, like the one, like you said, with her and the hoodie up and Eminem, like, I was like, okay, like, this is something I want to do eight mile, you know, where it's yeah, from the intense. movie. Yeah. The eight mile, uh, famous movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I just want to do whatever, like she's comfortable doing and, you know, just be different. So, but, I mean, I yeah. try to make videos that people want to watch multiple times and send to people, but it's, you know, sometimes it happens and most often it doesn't. 
But like that Eminem video, I literally sent to like 20 people. <laughs> and I've watched it many times myself because I just go, this is amazing. I got to watch it again. And I just loop it and loop it and come around again. And then I know I, I had to send it to my daughter and my daughter would love that. And, you know, I send it to people I know that love that we share. We share fun, you know, animal clips. And yeah. yours is one I send a lot. Like your your Instagram, I send to a lot of people. And and that's the difference of having a site that has 435,000 Instagram <laughs> followers or five. Because if yeah. only your own mother watches it, it's not going to ever take off. Absolutely. No Absolutely. no offense to our moms, but it's not enough to to create a, a huge audience. Yeah. And it's it's a lot of work, but I'm I'm very proud. I love when I hear that people share it because at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want content that you're like, I gotta show somebody else this video. Like I need to like show somebody. That's like to me, that's best compliment. Did you ever have like this amazing idea? Like, and that's how ideas come to us where we like, oh my God, this is an amazing idea. And then I have amazing ideas all the time and and listen to this with quotation marks around it because um, then it turns out that it was not a good idea that I just either mm. lose money on it. And I, I have these all the time. I have notebooks and scraps of paper and I write stuff down. I'm like, I'm going to do this in my office or I'm going to buy this machine for my office or I'm going to do this new project. And I put so much time, energy, money, and I could fill up volumes with all my bad ideas that I thought were amazing <laughs> ideas. But so in, in, in your case, I just want to ask, was there ever this like idea like, oh my God, I have to get Tori to do this with me. And then Tori said no. And you never Absolutely. got to do that one. So that one's in the trash. That one never got that one Absolutely. never got made. So what yeah. would it be a story like that? One that never happened. Yeah, it's just honestly, if I try to do something where she is just not comfortable and you know, you'll tell right away like a dog is not comfortable doing it. Um I've had many many ones where I just had to scrap it because at the end of the day like her safety her comfortability is always going to come first so yeah. um it's just I've had a lot of those and I started to realize what she is comfortable with so I try to like just start working around that so if mm -hmm. somebody's like hey you should do this video and it has a dog doing a backflip I'm like okay it's never gonna happen right, right. it's just or a dog jumping off a diving board into a swimming pool might not be yeah. your dog right <laughs> exactly like well, maybe it is but but it has to fit the dog yeah, so yeah. there's actually um, one of my biggest viral videos was a meme where like you go let your dog out in the winter and you're just sitting there waiting for them to use the bathroom and they're just messing around being completely fine and it's freezing outside. So the scene starts with Tori running into the backyard and then it cuts to another scene of her just hopping around in the snow while I'm like sitting there making a fire waiting for her to like use the bathroom and I'm just freezing my ass off. Um, so she actually was not the dog jumping in that video. Like I took that clip from another viral video and they look exactly the same. So that's a part of content creation. It's called fair use. So you can like use other clips and incorporate people do all the time. But I was like, I know Tori will not do this. Like this is like a viral clip of a dog bouncing in the snow, but I can get a clip of her running in a similar background. And it looks, you would never tell. So it looks just like it was found another Shiba. Inu, yeah, and that Shiba Inu became a stunt double for your dog. Exactly, and the funny it thing was is, a I stunt. Have we it. needed the stunt of us <laughs> prancing like Bambi the deer, yep. and she's like, "That's not part of my union contract." She's like, "I can't do that," or "Or it's going to cost you a lot more money for me to do that." And you was like, "Okay, we don't have the budget," so you bought in a stunt double. Exactly, and you cut that in perfectly, and no one could knows, knows now. Now we know, but otherwise, yeah. you can't tell. Yeah. And I, I mean, I credit the people that I um, use their content. So like in the caption, I'll be like credit from you yeah. know, this and that. But um, yeah, it was went super viral. That was actually my first super viral video. It was like over 30 million views. Um, wow. 30 million views. Yeah. And um, yeah, anything that she can't do, like if I can't somehow edit it in, I have a actual stunt double of her. So mm -hmm. I actually ended up doing a promotion for some company where they gave me a life-sized stuffed animal of her and it looks kind of like her same size and everything mm -hmm. and so whenever a dangerous scene comes by we just plop the stun double in and it, it works so yeah you know I, I i've studied a lot of comedy i i did um i used to write and get up in in new york city and do stand-up comedy and i i wasn't very good otherwise i'd probably still be doing it but <laughs> the the thing about comedy is one is exaggeration, right? So with we could take a number. Like if I said, um, you know, the, the big bully punched me in the arm three times, 
That's not as yeah. funny as if he said, and then he punched me in the arm 47 times. So if you exaggerate yeah. something like a number or whatever it is, you sometimes find a little bit of comedy in there. And then yeah. the other thing is universal. So it needs to universally touch us. So I have had dogs through a lot of my adult life. Right now I don't have one, but I remember, ta and I always seem to have dogs that couldn't take take the weather. They couldn't take the snow. They couldn't take the rain. And we're up here in the Northeast, you know, and going outside in a blizzard, trying to get my Hungarian Vizsla, who's scared of the snow, <laughs> at least mine was. And I'm like, go to the bathroom now, hurry up. And I'm freezing and, and the, the hail is coming down or the, the blizzard is coming down and she's shaking. And I know like, I got to get her to go. And she's doing everything except trying. And yeah. I'm literally starting to lose my cool. And I love the dog so much, but I'm losing my cool. And mm -hmm. so you take, you took this thing that got 30 million views, but it's because all of us know what it's like when our great dogs aren't acting great anymore. And, yep. and you showed that to us. And that's a great one, you know, because you, you found that, that, that comedy that's universal, that we're, it's very relatable. Absolutely. And I, I think you, again, hit the nail on the head. It's, you know, exaggeration and relatability. You can combine those two things. That's your like recipe for a viral video. Yeah. Um, so it's perfect. And they're, they're, they're like comic elements that are there in comedy. Like you see it over and over again. And um, you, you definitely look like a filmmaker, you know, you're a Appreciate filmmaker. Um, when did, when did you start to get like interest from, collaborations and sponsorship because you never pursued it. You weren't like into this going, Hey, I'm going to be my own PR department. I'm going to start mm -hmm. go doing outgoing sales calls. They just started coming to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have actually never like um, reached out to a company. I've always had everything be inbound. Um, but that's just because I've always put the content first. I've never got into it. Like, Hey, I want to make money for this. Like I want to just to do it because I wanted people to see my work. So that's mm -hmm. always a priority. And I think it kind of shows I don't post like three times a day or every day I post on average, like once or twice a week. And that's because I just am very crucial on myself. And I'm like, I run it through like five, 10 people. Hey, is this funny? Like, Hey, could like anything do better? Cause I just, the content matters so much more. And then once that started taking off and people could see it, like the engagement and how strong it was, that's when I had brands starting to reach out to me. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, like this is crazy. I've never would have thought I got to this point where BMW wants to work with me. Disney wants to work with me, like all this other stuff. But I was like, I, I rejected even a lot of deals. So I'm like, I, this doesn't fit into my content. I, I don't believe in this like stuff. So, mm -hmm. and the content in my audience order is going to come first. You know, it's funny, I because I, I scroll through your Instagram and um, I'm like 20 seconds in and I don't realize actually that you are doing a commercial like or a <laughs> collaboration because it's it's so organic. It's so embedded into your comedy. And I'll give you an example. Like there was one that you were doing for pet insurance mm, and yeah. we're, we're 20 seconds in and I'm like, oh, my God, he's plugging pet insurance. Yeah. I'm trying to think because I've seen so many, so they overlap a little bit. But you've done more than one for pet insurance, haven't you? Or um, just one. I've, I've done I've done two videos for the same pet insurance company. Yeah. So yeah. And and can you tell us the scene of one of those? Because uh, you'll recall yeah. it better than me since you made it. But yeah. But like the isn't that a good example of one that's actually like camouflaged almost? Yeah. And I think to me that's a successful ad. If you say something like that, then I'm like, I did my job perfectly because I hate to have like videos where it's like you just know it's an ad right away and you just click away. But when I see comments like, "Oh, I didn't even know this was an ad. This was a great ad. Like, I would love to watch these," then I'm like, I did my job. Yeah, you know? that that happened to me where I almost said to myself, "What? Rewind. There's no rewind." <laughs> but but he just put it you know, a pet insurance ad in that funny video that I didn't even see it. It was camouflaged. Uh, yeah. What was the scene of, of, of one like that? Like, do you, do you remember the storyboard or, or what the scene was and how, how did you take that on? Like you're thinking, Hmm, I got to plug the pet insurance. Cause that's what they're collaborating or paying you to do or whatever relationship you had with that to, to decide to do it. But then you thought like, how can I make this work for my content? So it's not, obtrusive or or mm. eh, like there he goes he's pitching something now yeah no i um the one i did for the pet insurance company we just did a day in the life which is a uh, very common for people to do day in the life of a creator and i just wanted a very strong opening 
just to start it off because these videos are a little bit longer and it was me waking up and I like moved my blanket and Tori flew off the bed in slow motion, but it was the stunt double. So I think that right away caught people's attention. They're like, wait, what Like just happened? Um, and then it's only about like 15 seconds in when I'm going through the day in the life and I'm like, okay, like Tori, what, what skit are we going to make today? So I'm showing her all these options of like angry coworker or Uber driver. And then one of them is like, uh, pet insurance like actor and then that's when she picks and then i'm like oh okay like we'll do that and then gets into the ad so yeah um they're already invested because of storyline and then they're like oh, okay like you know i didn't even notice that he's actually just pitching us an ad and stuff like that so now when you were in conversation with the pet insurance company did you like propose that idea or did they just say show us something in a week or two yeah it's definitely the latter um what i love is that when I usually work with these companies, they have a lot of trust in me. And I feel like when a company can give me creative freedom, I can give them the best ad. But if they come to me with a script and like, hey, we need you to say X, Y, and Z, um, show this product, I'm like, you're not gonna get a good ad. Like you're just right. not gonna get a good ad. So. And they're not gonna work with Cody and Tori either because yeah. <laughs> because you're you toe the line of like, it's still gotta work for your channel. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, it, it, it sucks, but, um, I'm in a position where like, I'll never need the money to like do this. Like, so they can't like, I'll never feel that pressure. Cause again, I, I work a full-time job and I think that's one thing that I really love is that like, I'm never like, I need to pay bills. So I need to just mm -hmm. pump out an ad. I'm like, no, if, if it doesn't align, I'm not going to do it. So I remember I once got this, um, uh, this game company and I looked it up and it was, I'm, I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't think that's appropriate, but, but it was all this like crazy violence and, um, and, and I'm sure it does, you know, it's a very successful company and I was very tempted, but they wanted to run it on my animal channel. And I said to them, how about my human channel? Maybe, I, you know, I could go there cause I have the human chiropractic and the animal, the animal one I, I'm a little protective of because, you know, they're animals and, you know, I have a tender, I think there's a, a different audience with the animal cracker channel compared to my house of Cairo channel. Yeah. Well, I know there is, cause I could look at the analytics. And, um, <laughs> so that one was very tempting cause the money was good. Yeah. And I was thinking maybe I should just put this like, you know, destruct, destroy animal, you know, game. And, and I'm like, no, I just can't do it. So I said no to that one. And um, then I've gotten stuff as ridiculous as like an electric toothbrush. They want me to unpack an electric toothbrush from China. And I'm like, but why, why would I do that? Like, how could I actually fit that into any of my content? Right. Yeah. Like a massager I could, right. Or yeah. a nail clipper for dogs. But how do I get in like an electric toothbrush? It has to make some, either some sense to me or something I really am interested personally. No, and I, I agree with that. I think your most valuable asset as a content creator is your audience. So you need mm -hmm. to protect that and like they trust you. Yeah. So if you build that trust up and you just push out a product that you're just pushing it out for money, they're going to tell right away. They're like, oh, okay, like, you know, but if you push out something you really believe in or you really push out something that is a good like ad, they're going to appreciate you even more. And I've just mm -hmm. been really treasuring my audience and I want to build like a very, very strong like connection with them. So, yeah. And you know, in, in advertising, there's different types of ad campaigns. So for example, there could be a Toyota commercial that goes, come down Saturday to the Toyota thon. We're giving Toyotas a 20% off and come to, uh, you know, Jericho turnpike and route 77 and we'll see you on Saturday. So that's like a call to action. That's for a specific Toyota branch distributor, you know, dealership. And that's trying to, that's an ad that's trying to get you to go there on Saturday, you know, yeah. where they're going to have their big Toyota thon. And then there's other things like bigger companies uh, that don't necessarily need you to sell their product that day. It's more brand awareness. So, you know, mm -hmm. maybe BMW or, or Facebook, they don't need, they don't need Corey and Tori to get people to sign up for Facebook. And they're going to be measuring that like, whoa, we got nine new signups from that ad, Corey. Thank you very much. We're expecting 20, but you got 20 people to use Facebook for the first time. So they're not asking you to do that. They're, yeah. they're, they want to be hip and cool in front of the public. So they look for someone like. that feels the pulse like you, 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 you're relevant. You're, you're young, you're relevant. You, you are part of pop culture. You're, and they're thinking, let's team up with this guy who knows he's got that vibe. Yeah. And, and that's why they give you creative freedom because they don't need you to sell a Toyota this week. Yeah. 
And that's what I like. I, I like that brand awareness. And um, I think that for brands, they should do that more. Um, but I also get like they, they need to actually pitch some products sometimes. So yeah. And then you have to really pick and choose. Can I pitch this and make <laughs> yeah. it work for my channel? Yeah, right? no, like I, I didn't really I didn't really want to pitch electric toothbrushes. I just didn't want to do it. What happened first, the Amazon, the Meta or the Disney, like one of those two or three big ones that did approach you? Which one was the first big one that approached you? Uh, I think the first biggest uh, brand that I worked with um, was PetSmart. And, um, and you know, that's huge. Line. <laughs> that's yeah. huge. That was that was my first biggest one, first biggest payday. And I think that's when I went back to my dad um, because my dad didn't think really take it seriously, like my content creation. He was just thought it was like a hobby for fun. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm working with PetSmart. And he was like, okay. And then I was like, they're paying me like X amount of dollars. He was like, oh, <laughs> Whoa. This is like, yeah, this is serious. And I was yeah. like, yeah. And I, I didn't even think I was going to make that much. So that was like the first biggest one. And that's when I was like, okay, like there's a Was lot that a one-time thing or were they looking at you for maybe a, a series of videos? PetSmart. Um, I, I, it was um it was a one time thing, but they actually um, came back around for another um, video that they wanted to make. But at the time, I actually was swamped with uh, work, and I had to actually decline because I was I was like I have I'm working on two other campaigns and I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually can't do this because I need to have time to like sit down, storyboard, make sure I give you guys like a quality um, ad. So yeah, and yeah. then how about when uh like Amazon, Meta, or Disney. I mean, we've all heard those those three companies are actually, I don't know, I'm not looking at any statistics, but they're top <laughs> 20 companies, you know, or top 10 in the world, at least Meta and Amazon are, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, Amazon. Disney's, Disney's no slouch. They're, if you think of everything Disney owns, they're huge. Yeah, they, they I worked with Disney actually the most. They've, I think I've worked with them almost four times now. Um, mm -hmm. So they've come back and um, they just, asked me to do it again. I do UGC for them. So that's just where I don't know what um, that is. Uh, UGC is user generated content. So it never actually goes on my organic feed, I make it for them, and then they run the ads. So that was probably the coolest in terms of like exposure, because people were seeing my face like on Snapchat ads, they were seeing it on like Instagram ads, like, um, so they put a lot of money behind it, you know, they're Disney. So they were just like, pushing my like face out and my content out um and people were like hey is this is this cody like like why we're seeing him like everywhere and stuff like that and i was like yeah what do they have you actually make a video or is it just a few photographs of you guys together or can you yeah. can you explain how it give me an exact example yeah so for regular content right a, a company can come to you and be like hey here's our product can you pit like make us a video and put it on your profile. So I would do that and it would reach my million followers. UGC is like, Hey, make us a video, um, you know, follow our script or whatever. And then you give them that video and they go and push it and run ads. You know, they, they do it themselves. Does that make sense? Like they don't, it's not going to go on your profile. So they'll go and they'll put it on Facebook, put money behind it, and then they'll promote it. Um, would it or they can use it for their website. Would it be one of your comedic type of films? Uh, like, can you, can you give us an example of what Disney might have, like one of the four that you did with Disney, what was the sketch or what was the scene? Yeah, I would say, um, UGC typically they're, they're more, um, they're more stick to a script, um, mm -hmm. which to me, I'm fine with that because it's, it's not on my profile and it, you know, it doesn't really align right. with my stuff, but they, um, they usually, they, they do want me to be comedic still. Um, but Disney specifically is actually pretty strict. They're like they're the strictest company I've, I've worked with. They're like, okay, we need you to say this. There can't be anything in the background. Like you need to wear plain clothing. So it's pretty much like read a script. Um, and yeah, which I, I But I guess who cares because uh, it's not going to be on your feed anyway. Like you're, exactly. it's not on your personal channel. So it's not from your content menu. Exactly. You're making exactly. them like a private video, then they can promote and, and do whatever exactly. they want with. That's I mean, exactly that's amazing. You know, it's yeah. amazing they picked you because they saw something. I mean, Disney is been in the film and content business <laughs> for, you know, many generations, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I, so, they, I, so they looked at you as a filmmaker. Yeah. So um, I think one thing is they, they really liked that um, I was very um, like attention to detail. Like I have the lighting good. I have the angles and I was also on time. So they, they were very strict with like, we need the assets by... X date, X time, like, could you do that? And I'm always on it. 
Like, do they have a lot of revisions for you, or do they, you know? Yeah, um, they're they're so detailed that like a revision is rare because they will down to the T. Make sure you're filming in a background that doesn't have a TV showing. Like, make sure the lighting is good, and like, make sure like the Disney logo is in the top right corner within these boundaries. Like, it's it's very hard to get a revision because of how specific they are. So yeah, um, if it is, it's like a very small edit. But that's great so. for you too because they know what they want. I love that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've worked with brands where we have changed the whole script a couple times, and I'm like, "Is Tori uh, around where you can put him on your lap for a minute, or do you think he'll yeah. give me the side eye and not want to do that?" No, no, she she's good. She'll sit down for a little bit. Um, All right, because we'll, we'll, we're gonna. We'll, I have just a couple of closing stuff, but I'd love to see Tori pop in the screen, even if you just hold her up for five seconds. Yeah, let me grab her. Yeah, <laughs> shows here. Can you sit? Sit. Yay. She's gorgeous. Oh, oh, oh. She, she sees a dog outside. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there we go. That's my, what I wanted to hear was the scream. Yeah. My window's right here, so she's looking at the dog outside. So can you sit? Sit. There we go. Good girl. So it's amazing you could get her to do as much as you do. I'm telling you, you guys have to see his videos. You have to see what he's doing. And he yeah. gets this dog who in some ways is the wrong dog to pick, but it's the perfect dog to pick because uh, she gets, she's such a good, what do you call it? A muse, M-U-S-E. She's your muse. Yeah. She, she works with you. She's, she's great. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I had two, two questions left for you today is, is one, have, have you seen stuff in the comments that ever just touched your heart of like, I remember I, I once had this uh, comment that from this woman, in the UK that uh, is severely autistic and uh, kind of homebound. She's too scared. I, what's it called? Agoraphobia or, you know, where she doesn't even want to leave the house. And mm -hmm. she says the animal videos just make a difference for her. And mm -hmm. I literally like had tears in my eyes when I read it and I wrote her a long thing back and, you know, try to connect to her. But I just was so glad that, you know, there was someone that, that, my videos touched. And so I, I guess that's one question I have for you. And then I have one more before we finish today, but is yeah. there any comments? You don't have to remember the exact comment, but, but just ways that you reach someone that surprised you. Yeah. Um, there, there's specifically like, I know one fan, um, I, I hate to refer to people as fans. Um, one person who enjoyed my content um and she's been following for a long time loves tori and she's been battling cancer so mm. she is just like your videos like make everything like honestly better going through chemotherapy i love seeing tori like you inspired me to get a shiba so she actually ended up getting a shiba um and i remember it was tori's birthday i kid you not she sent just the biggest box of toys like oh. so many and she was like Every time I talk to her, it's long messages, just how much she like enjoys my content and helps her through the chemotherapy. And I was like, I just would never imagine like my content being that impactful, yeah. but it means the world to me to hear yeah. something like that. So. I mean, in some ways, isn't that better than doing a gig with Disney, you know, or I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's easy for me to say, but, but like, cause that's such a huge thing. But I think years from now, you'll remember her more than your Disney like oh, how much how much money you made you know yeah and hopefully because maybe that money that you made with disney would be insignificant you know when you're in your 50s um compared to like oh my god that woman touched my heart and i'll never forget yeah. her and Absolutely. and that is and you can even tell your dad and that's also one of the reasons i do this is because <laughs> you know i want to make a difference and make people smile and that's yep. you're in the make people smile business as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. So yeah, or no, that... actually laugh out loud in 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 my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> that's that yeah. that's all it's all about. So, so I, that, I really appreciate that. Yeah, so that's a beautiful story. Thank you. And then mm -hmm. I guess also I, I always like to ask, um, how has working with your specific dog, Tori, how has it shaped you? Like how have you have you feel like you've learned something from your dog? Has it touched you as a man, as a human on this planet? Like, and yeah. I, I often say, you know, um, you know, I, I like to interview people that make a difference in the lives of animals, but also I'm very curious on how those animals make a difference in our lives. So that's yeah. my question to you. How does 
being in this field of animal content make a difference in your life? Yeah, I would say the two biggest things it taught me is just um, one, patience. You, you mm -hmm. have to be very patient when you're filming, especially with an animal. Um, if they're not comfortable, like I mentioned in the beginning, like I just have to scrap the idea. So patience and then also just selflessness. Like I, I need to really put her first all the time and realize like her needs are essentially a little bit more important than mine. You know, like I want to make sure she's safe and she's healthy. And I, before I had Tori, it was just me. I had to just take care of myself. Um, but now it's mm -hmm. like my schedule revolves around her. Like I need to be home to feed her. I got to keep up with training, um, all those things. And it just made me realize it's like, and this is what having a kid is like you, where you just feel like you're putting like that, living thing first and that's your priority is like to take care of them make sure they're like good and it's not only about you so mm -hmm. definitely those two things patience and selflessness and i am so so grateful for that and i feel like it made me a way better person than i was before i had her so that's awesome and that's why i wanted you to do this podcast with me because you're not just in the animal world but you got this big heart you're just such a sweet lovely man and i respect you so much because you. you could see in your content that you have, you know, well, you, you have the ability to touch people, you know, I literally chuckle when I watch your videos. I, I, I out loud, I'm, you know, laughing and the end of my day when I'm laying in bed trying to go to sleep and I'm like, go like what we all do these days is we just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. And then I get on one of your thing and I, and I rewatch stuff because you don't make yeah. it fast enough. Twice a week doesn't work for me. I need you to post <laughs> five times a day. No, I'm joking. Um, but like, I, I love it. And, um, and, and I watch others, you know, I watch tons of stuff, but yours is one of the, the ones that I always get excited about. And, and I, I imagined I go, I bet he's a really cool guy. And Ruth is my assistant that helps me put this together. And, and I'm like, See if you can get him to say yes. I really want this guy. He seems like a really awesome guy, and you are. And I'm yeah. very grateful that you were on today. We're gonna, um, you know, in the description box is all his his contact. And if you watch the video version of this, instead of driving in your car, we've had this on the screen almost the whole time. We keep popping up his handles, so it's it's you know it's on the screen already. But say it again one more time. Your your TikTok and your Instagram. Um, and even spell yeah. it for us. Yeah. Um, so across the board uh, is Cody Taurus, C-O-D-Y, and then dot Taurus, T-A-U-R-U-S, just like the Zodiac sign. So that's what we're all across. Yeah. All and if you, he's he's so uh, in the search rankings that if you type in Cody dot Taurus, you're going to find him. You know, yeah. you'll find him. Because <laughs> uh, Google, Google knows who he is. All right. Great. Um, thank you so much. And uh, have a great day. Yeah. Thank you so much right. for having me. All right, thank you.